Well, we're getting close to the end of the unit now. This is 3.3c. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about isosceles and equilateral triangles and then solving for some missing sides and angles in those guys. Um, so first thing we need to talk about is that sides across from congruent angles are congruent. So I have two different triangles here. One of them is an isosceles triangle. So this ang uh, triangle XYZ is an isosceles triangle. So I'm going to write that next to it. So an isosceles triangle has those two congruent legs. So all we know for sure is that this side and this side are congruent. Um, but with this new information here um, is that we have congruent angles across from each of these. So across from this side, we have this angle Y. It has to be congruent to this angle Z. So isosceles triangles not only have two congruent sides, they also have two congruent angles, and that's going to be important. Okay. And then we also have over here an equilateral triangle. And I know I mentioned this briefly a couple lessons ago, but equilateral triangles, because they have three congruent sides, they also have three congruent angles. And even more than that, we know that all of them measure 60 degrees. So um, equilateral triangles, uh, they're not very exciting. They're all the same. Um, well, they're all similar. They're not all the exact same size, but they have those exact same angle measures, 60, 60, and 60. So we'll need that information as we go through the examples here. So in these examples, we're going to set up an equation, um, solve for x, and then we're actually going to go and find those missing sides. So it looks like what we're dealing with here is we're dealing with an isosceles triangle. And we know that because we have two congruent angles. So because we have two congruent angles, we know that across from each of those, we have two congruent sides. So we now know that 2x plus 19 has to be equal to 4x plus 7. Okay. Right now, we don't know anything about the x plus 10. Um, we'll leave it there for now, but we don't, it's, we don't know if it's equal to anything or not. Probably not, um, but we'll leave it where it's at. Okay. At that point, let's get all of our x's to the same side. We're going to end up with negative 2x here, which is fine. We can deal with that. Okay, and then we're going to subtract 19 from both sides. So we have negative 2x is equal to negative 12. Yes, 7 minus 19 is negative 12. And then last step, um, don't be confused here. Don't try to add 2 to both sides. It's still multiplication. Opposite of multiply by negative 2, divide by negative 2. And when we do that, we're left with x equals positive 6. Negative 12 divided by negative 2, positive 6. So we've set up our equation, we've solved for x. Now we need to find those missing sides. Um, not angles this time, we're not given enough information, but we can find the missing sides. So we're gonna take that six and we're gonna substitute it in three different places, here, here, and also over here, okay? So first spot, two times x, so two times six plus 19. I'm gonna do that all in one step. Two times six is 12. Uh, 12 plus 19 is going to be 31. And then down here, we have 4 times 6 plus 7. 4 times 6 is 24. Um, 24 plus 7 is 31. So that's good. Those two are supposed to be the same, and it looks like they are the same. So that's great news. Um, last place then is over here. 6 plus 10. Is 16. So that side's not the same. Um, that's the base, and that's fine. It wasn't necessarily supposed to be the same, but it is good news that our isosceles triangle does end up with two congruent sides. All right, and then one more example here. This is kind of a tough one, um, but we can handle it, and I will definitely walk you through it so we make sure that we get it. Um, the main thing here, um, the place that I would start, I guess, is with these congruent sides. So they're giving us these two sides are congruent. So I know that 4y minus 2 has to be equal to 14. So I'll solve that first. Add 2 to both sides. 4y is 16. Divide by 4. And y is equal to 4. Okay. Um, now that we have that, 
Um, we could certainly substitute it back in, um, or we could just say, because we were told at the beginning, um, that that side there has to be 14. So we have all of our sides. We have 14, 14, and 19. Our sides are done. Um, now we should go work on our angles. Um, and the, the hint here is that across from these congruent sides, we are finding congruent angles. So I don't know what these angles are yet. Um, I do know that they have to be equal to each other. Okay, um, so one way to do it, there are a couple different ways to do this problem, um, but one way is to just do 2x plus 1 is equal to 3x minus 4 and solve it that way. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 3x. We're going to get negative 1x plus 1 equals negative 4. Subtract 1. Negative 1x equals negative 5. Divide by negative 1, and x is 5. Okay, with that 5 then, we need to substitute it back in. So 2 times 5 plus 1 is going to be 11 degrees. And then we can check it up here. So 3 times 5 minus 4. Well, 3 times 5 is 15, and 15 minus 4 is 11. So that one is also 11 degrees. If you didn't want to do it that way, I just want to show you an alternative method here. What you could do is you could use this 158 degree angle. So we could say, all right, we know our entire triangle um, has to have 180 degrees. We've already used 158 of those 180 degrees. That's going to leave us with 22 degrees. Okay, So we have 22 degrees left for these two angles. We know they have to be equal, so we can just split that 22 degrees in half, and now we have 11 degrees. So it's up to you which way you want to solve it, as long as you can figure out um, that our angles are 11, 11, and 158. Your sides are 14, 14, and 19. Um, you're, you're fine in my book. So whatever works for you. All right. And then the last example here, this is a quick and easy one. Um, if you know that all of your sides are 10, all of your sides are the same, then you know that all of your angles are the same. And you also know that they're all 60. Okay. So basically your question here is what do you multiply 5 by to get 60? Um, I always remember this one because I'm exactly 5 feet tall and 5 times 12 is 60. So I'm 60 inches. That's how I remember. Um, if, that's, if that's not working for you, you could just set up a little equation. 5x is equal to 60 divided by 5. And x would have to be 12. All right. And that, I believe, is it for examples. So in summary, um, just remember equilateral triangles have three congruent sides and three congruent angles. Um, not only do they have those congruent sides, but they also have those congruent angles. And then isosceles triangles have two congruent sides that are across the triangle from two congruent angles. So um, algebra, lots of algebra on these problems, but you guys can handle it with a little practice. Good luck.